Hi there folks and thanks for joining us again. Um, we're not in the studio today, we're in the living room and this will be a, a scene maybe that's familiar to you. Sitting in the living room during lockdown um, with a surly teenager or student as it is actually. Oh dear, you might have heard that. I think he took his headphones off. Um, <laughs> what we're looking at today folks is proportioning and I thought I'd take advantage of this scene um, to really create something quite complicated, or it's quite a complicated looking drawing, but I wanted to show you how it can be simplified when you think about proportions. Now, one of the reasons you can have confidence as an artist to draw anything is because you have a grip on proportioning and how to proportion something on the page. So if you're producing something representational, it's very important to consider that before you start. So don't just launch in and be dictated to the, by you know, the kind of chance happening of wh whatever size you've made the head. You can decide in advance where you want the figure to be positioned on the page and how big you want it to be, how much of the surrounding area you want to take in, or how much you want to zoom in on the figure as well, just by stopping before you start and doing a couple of little bits of measuring. Once you get the hang of doing this as well, it only takes an extra five minutes at the most to be able to position everything and get it looking um, exactly as you want it. So first thing to do is when you look at the figure or look at the scene, it can be a landscape, it can be a still life, decide what it is that interests you about the scene. Do you want to zoom in or do you want to pan out and get more in? In this instance, I think what I'll do is crop the figure just below the kneecap here and I want to take in maybe just the edge of the laptop and just the top of the head and maybe a little bit of the back of the chair. So I'm envisaging that in my mind's eye. I'm looking and thinking, that's what I want to crop in. That's what I'm interested in, in terms of the composition. Now I could start that, but I might end up starting it with the head too small and end up with this tiny little drawing on this big sheet of paper. Or I might end up starting the head too big and run out of room and not manage to fit everything on. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to measure a little bit reality and um, get a proportion that works. And then I'm going to apply that to my page. Now the system I'm going to be using is arm's length measuring and that requires me to have a constant measurement in advance. And the constant, whenever you have a figure, is generally the head length and that's what I'm going to use. So to get that, the clues in the title as well, is arm's length measuring. So I have to do it at arm's length every time because that measurement and that measurement and this measurement will be three different measurements. So I'm going to stay rooted in the same spot and I'm going to extend my arm out and this is going to be the position I'll take all of my measurements from throughout the process of the drawing. Uh, so the first thing I do is I position the pen or pencil, whatever you're holding, on the crown of the head here and I slide my thumb down until it's just under the chin. Then I take the pen and I move it down to the chin so the tip of the pen is on the point of the chin and I look at where my thumb is in relation to that. So it's just round about the crook of the elbow actually, that sort of length I'm looking at. Then I would move that down again so the tip of the pen was now where my thumb was and I'd look at where my thumb is now and it's just where the leg is disappearing or touching the uh, chair there, the cushion on the chair. So that's one, two, three of a measurement and that's just about perfect, that's kind of what I want to take in. Anything else is superfluous. I really want to focus in on the top half of the figure and the hands on the computer. So that's perfect for me. Um, at the same time now, what I want to do is I want to figure out horizontally what are the proportions in relation to that. So I'm just using the same measurement. I haven't changed it. I'll just double check that that's still crown ahead to chin on my pen. And I'll turn that on its side and then I'm going to position that on the shoulder there. And if I look at where my thumb is, that's perfect. So the point of the shoulder takes me to just about where the chin is, in fact. So I get that same measurement. So chin to crown is the same as the outside edge of the chin to the left hand side shoulder, Ethan's right shoulder, uh, but left as we're looking at it. Uh, so that's perfect. So I know if I came out from there, I'd get one that way. Two would take me, if I then move my thumb to where the shoulder is, two would take me beyond the edge of the chair. So I know that two out from the chin covers everything I want in that direction. And if I put the point of the pen on the chin again, I would get three, probably four. Four would take me just beyond the edge of the laptop. So I need to make sure that on my page, 
I decide on a measurement that's going to fit four times across and four times down. If I were just to use that measurement of the head and the chin and turn it around, the chances are high that things would get a bit tight on my page here. In fact, it would go well off the page and I would lose that. So I'm going to use that as a proportional measurement, not an actual measurement. So this measurement I'm about to decide applies to my page. The measurement up here applies to the figure. It might sound complicated, but hopefully it'll become a bit clearer as I work. Um, so I'm going to decide on a measurement, an arbitrary measurement that fits four times onto my page. And I know that will cover everything that I want. So let's try it across the way, because that's the one where the, the measurement's a bit narrower. I need to find a measurement that fits once, twice, three times, four times. And that was a pretty good guess. I think that's just about perfect. So what I want to do then is say that this is going to be the outside edge or just beyond the outside edge of the chair. One in will be the shoulder. Two in will be the point of the chin, the right hand side of the chin. Three in was just about in alignment actually with the hands down here. And four would take me just past where the laptop's gonna go. So I know the laptop's gonna sit in somewhere about here. I'm not sure exactly where yet, but somewhere about there it will end up on the page. All the time I'm doing this, I'm envisaging it. I'm looking and thinking, trying to imagine that figure there on the page with all the extremities laid out. And this is such a vital part of um, any drawing or painting. Really important that you do this. Without this, you're working in the dark and you won't have that confidence that you can draw everything that you want to draw. Um, so I know that's going across there. I'm going to mark this in just as a wee grid. So I'll put in my fourth little dot there. So that gives me three heads across. And the fourth one, as I said, will just go off the edge just about, I think. Let me take it back in. Actually, I've gone a little bit far out there, about there, and just the edge of the page. Perfect, because I know the inside edge of the computer is going to fit into that. And then I'm going to turn that around, mark where I want the top of the head to be. So that's going to be the crown of the head there. Chin's going to come down to about there. So that's going to be a head length. My second head length, if you remember, took me down to roughly where the elbow, the crook of the elbow sits in about there somewhere across the tummy. The next head length down took me down to roughly where the leg touch, touches the um, cushion on the seat. So we've got one, two, three down the figure and one, two, three and a little bit across the figure. So everything is going to fit on the page in advance and I'm quite happy with that. So I'm going to get started drawing now and hopefully you'll see how that's helped um, to position the figure and get the composition the way I want it. Okay folks, so hopefully you can see that starting to emerge on the page there. Um, what I've been doing is, is going back and double checking some of those head lengths and checking that the height and width ratio is reasonably accurate, double checking that on my page to see that it corresponds. At the same time, there's one other proportioning tool that I'm using um, that I haven't mentioned yet. And that's the idea of horizontal and vertical alignment. So what I'm doing is I'm checking, for instance, uh, where the hands are in relation to the music that was behind there. So I dropped this vertical line down the edge of the finger from my viewpoint here corresponds almost exactly with the edge of the music sheet there. Um, things like the back of the chair here is horizontally in alignment with this point of the shoulder. Uh, I was looking as well for where the edge of this part of the seat was in relation to say the side of the head there. And just checking that everything matches up horizontally and vertically as I go. So at this stage, it's still quite tentative. The lines aren't very firm, it's sort of solidly in. And I can still assess and reassess whether that's really where I want it to go. But it captures everything I pretty much wanted to. I can work into the hands, I can work into the face. I've got this quite interesting corner here with some of the folds in the fabric. I think that's going to be the composition I'm going to, I'm going to want to have. Um, the angle might be slightly different from the camera view, uh, but not too different. Hopefully, it's, hopefully you're able to get a feel for it anyway. I'm just going to carry on now for the next uh, maybe 20, 30 minutes or so and scribble in a bit more detail and see what we end up with at the end, okay?
Okay, folks, I think I'm going to call it quits there. Um, by starting off with the proportions, what I've ended up with, I think, is a, a very lively and uh, expressive drawing um, of a teenager in his natural habitat, uh, in his little nest there. Um, in fairness, this is uh, Ethan's first time in front of camera. Normally, he's the one who's behind camera doing all of the, the filming for this. Um, so he's done a great job of sitting still for this duration. We've been at it probably for about just, just about an hour, maybe slightly over now. Um, and there's a lot of mark making there. I've been using a lot of directional mark making to create form. But the thing that gave me that confidence in the first place was being able to think about the proportions. And that's the really key issue. Taking that original constant measurement of the head, measuring down the body, across the body to get the height to width ratio, and just to get a, an overall picture before I started of where everything was going to go on the page. Um, and it's ended up pretty much as I expected. I've managed to fit a little bit more on underneath uh, than I thought initially, but overall it's positioned where I wanted it on the page and it's focusing in on the hands and the face and some of the textures as well, the contrast and texture, which is what I wanted to capture at the beginning of the, the drawing. Um, so I hope that's been helpful for you. And um, your subject matter doesn't need to be quite as complicated if you don't want it to be. But always try and take a constant measurement and apply that to the proportions of your drawing. Thanks again. See you later.